My name is Aviva Endine and I'm from Nam or Melbourne in Australia. I'm a clarinet player, improviser and composer and I'm going to be talking about one element of my instrumental practice which has to do with extending or preparing the clarinet using additional objects alongside my existing instruments. So the idea with this practice is that I am thinking about transferring the vibration or the resonance from my clarinet or bass clarinet into these other objects. The objects that I am using are generally things that I've just found along the way. There are nothing in particular that are that special but they become very special through the way that I work with them and get to know them over time. Even though these objects are not designed to be used as uh, instruments per se, I become very interested in kind of getting to know the subtle differences of how manipulating that object will affect the sound. This is a drum head which was discarded. This is just a biscuit tin lid but it is a quite special one because it has this plastic membrane in the middle so it also functions kind of like a drum. This is one of the few things that I've bought. It's a tiny speaker inside a uh, old cigarette packet. This is a tube that I found on the side of the road and I've just spray painted it black and I have this piece of alfoil. So something that I'm really interested in when I'm working with these objects is the sort of level of unpredictability. They haven't been designed to be played in this way so it's almost impossible to control the sound in the same way that I am able to with my clarinet or bass clarinet after many years of study. However you do get to know the instrument really really well after um, an amount of time with it and you can sort of become you know, quite masterful at controlling it to an extent. And this kind of becomes like a sort of strange form of virtuosity in a very minute field. So to work with the drum head, I decided to work with what I call the mini clarinet, which is where I put the mouthpiece into the lower joint of the instrument. And that's because um, in order for the air to be coming out of the bell of the clarinet and therefore onto the drum head, it's only possible if I close all of the tone holes. So then the tim lid is quite similar to the drum head, only um, it has quite a different quality of sound. So even though the techniques for playing it might be quite similar, the resulting sound is quite different. It has quite a different character and has this wonderful sort of nasal and aggressive quality. So when I was playing there with that tin lid, I don't know exactly when I'm going to hit on those subtones or those ricochets and I can control it slightly by how much um, pressure I'm putting on the bell of the instrument or exactly which angle I have the tin lid on, how much breath, like airspeed I'm putting into the clarinet. But there is still this elusive quality where I can't know that if I put my bell directly on this part here of the membrane that it's going to get a particular tone. So that's part of the reason that I really like working with these objects because there is that sort of quality that I might never find that exact sound again, or at least not easily. So they've got this, um, they've got this beautiful elusive kind of quality and I need to be working with them in this like kind of quite tactile and quite sort of central way. So what I often work with when I'm playing with the pocket amplifier is covering and uncovering the speaker. So you get this kind of wonderful vibrato or sort of chorusy kind of effect. Um, and it also just obviously changes the tone of the clarinet. So rather than only hearing the acoustic sound of the clarinet, I'm starting to hear what the, sa the sound of the clarinet sounds like through a tiny speaker, which has this kind of wonderful, almost like basic synthesizer kind of sound to it.
So again, even though in this scenario I have my complete clarinet, um, I still am limiting my pitch range because in order to manipulate the speaker, I again only have one hand to use on the clarinet. So this is always a consideration, but I kind of like this because in limiting one element of the materials you have available to you, you're sort of opening up a different realm of opportunities. Of course, I don't need to be manipulating um, the movement of the speaker, so I could also just put it down on the table next to me. One other thing I quite like doing with this pocket amplifier is um, using it as a moving force for the sound. So in order to do this, I'm just going to tape the lead into the speaker because even though it's a relatively good fit, um, I don't want to send the speaker flying across the room. So this is another one of my objects that I love at the moment. It's just an old tube. It was part of a children's pet playpen. Uh, it comes apart like this. It, it just has a really beautiful sound, I guess, because of the di changing diameter of the two tubes. And it sort of also is feels like a magical coincidence that my bass clarinet mouthpiece fits perfectly into the top of it. Um, if you find a tube that you really like or you want to explore and it doesn't fit your mouthpiece perfectly, you can often just use different diameters of um, tube connecting one to another or using plumber's tape. So with my bass clarinet now, I've got a piece of alfoil wrapped around the instrument. Um, and this kind of functions like a buzzer, like you might have on a bellophon or a djembe, um, often something that we really only hear on percussion instruments. One more note about the alfoil is that it might sound ridiculous, but it really is worth buying actual alfoil brand alfoil or good quality thick alfoil. Um, I have in the past tried to buy you know, home brand ones, and for sonic purposes, that they're just not quite as good. So anyone who's interested in pursuing this kind of area of investigation in their practice, um, I would just say just, just be curious, be inquisitive, look at the objects around you in your daily life and think about how they might intersect with your instrument. There's probably a way we could use almost any object um, in combination with our instrument and then it's just a matter of just having a play with them and seeing which ones are the most exciting to you. So yeah, it's just a nice way of thinking about how your practice with sound can just be extended and how your instrumental practice could be complemented by other things that are around you in the world. I hope that's been helpful and enjoy. Mm -hmm.